Hello everyone, who likes to have sweet dreams or in this case stories of nightmares. Starting off with two motels in the state of Nevada. First being in the town of Tanoka. Where travelers can stay in the clown motel. If you don't suffer from chlorophobia then this motel may be good for you to spend the night, or is it? This motel is 70 miles from the nearest town and the car park is also shared with the local cemetery. How did this motel come to be? Leona and Leroy David bought the motel from their father, who was a huge clown collector. Instead of selling approximately 150 clowns, Leona and Leroy decided to theme the motel around them. The clown motel has 31 rooms all equipped with air conditioning, fridge, microwave and a television. However, if guests choose to stay in rooms 108, 111, 210 or 214, then an added supernatural host will keep you company for the evening. Those that are supposedly laid to rest in the nearby cemetery used to work in the local silver mine called the Belmont Mine. In 1911 the mine was in flames, unfortunately some miners were not able to get out, leaving them entombed forever. During the summer months an event named Tonopa Ghost Walk, which delves into the history in more detail as the Clown Motel is classed as America's most scariest. Despite all the scary happenings and the clowns, this motel gets fully booked very easily. Not surprised with the motel's other offerings to guests, barbecues can be used on personal patios, pets are welcomed with an additional fee, and every guest's hit list when staying away from home, free Wi-Fi. Second is in Las Vegas. A motel named The Oasis which dates back to 1950 and previously known as Emla Motel. This motel was also temporarily closed in 2012, which is thought by many to be haunted, which will not be a surprise with gunshot holes within the rooms and other criminal activity that has taken place over the decades. Room 20 is classed as an active room from those that should be residing in the spiritual realm. The two spirits that are thought to haunt the room are David Strickland, the second person to die in Room 20, of Oasis Motel, who played mostly minor roles in movies and television series. David Strickland suffered with bipolar and was prescribed lithium to try and keep it under control. For some reason unknown David Strickland stopped taking his medication. After going out one evening with friends on the Las Vegas Strip, he hung himself within room 20. Stu Unger who was a well-renowned poker player, was the first to die in the room. Stu Unger was brought up in the gambling scene by his father who owned a casino within New York City. After his father died Stu Unger became friends with a mob boss and over time Stu Unger looked to him as a father figure. The first ever World Series of Poker Championships to under one was in 1980, his second championship he won was a year later. Stu Unger became highly addicted to drugs like cocaine, which led him down a downward spiral of debt. November 20, 1998 Stu Unger's dead body was found in room 20 at Oasis Motel. An autopsy showed that Stu Unger had little amount of drugs in his system which means he died due to long-term use. If future potential guests think that this may be a good place to stay for a chance of a haunting experience, well according to some reviews, this motel has plenty of other scares like cockroaches and fleas. Visiting Maryland for our next story. No it is not the home of making delicious cookies but the home of Motel Nightmare from Hell. Swan Hotel located in Halethorpe where blood was situated everywhere in the room, on the bed, the carpet and walls which looked like a murder had taken place inside the room. This room was cheap for a single that cost $40 to rent for a night, with paper thin walls that tore away and sinks being clogged with vomit. $40 still seems expensive for spending a night in a real-life horror movie set. If that was not enough, beetles crawled out of crumbling tiles that surrounded the shower. Within New York now for our next story.
Staten Island there is a motel named the Cosmopolitan. This building is not maintained well by the owner but that is not the issue with this motel, it's the prostitutes and drug handlers. 2015 Three people died at this location with no remorse for life, the youngest death being a prostitute aged 21 years, who died due to a bullet through the head. There had been a scuffle beforehand and her pimp tried and saved the prostitute from the attackers, which turned out to be absolutely pointless because she died anyway. People in other rooms were used to people knocking and banging during the night, through sexual activities going on which no one actually cared until they heard gunfire. To a country that is either far east or west from America. Japan has created motels that are especially different, they are known as love motels. The one that is being focused on within this story is Fiorin Motel situated in the country's capital Tokyo, which is now abandoned by humans but said to be inhabited by supernatural spirits. Couples could rent out any ten rooms for their own sexual activities and sexual fantasies. Each room is still perfectly preserved and each room was named traditionally to keep with the traditional themes, like the ancient Greek room, where an oval bed was the centerpiece with nude female busts that decorated the walls. The medieval room had a cart for a bed and a knight's suit of armor which is said to be haunted overlooking the guest's sexual deeds and the traditional Japanese ryokan room. For our next motel story is within New Jersey. Built in the 1950s, post-war New Sea Breeze Motel was a good place to spend a few days with family or friends. Now it is a place of terror. In this day and age it is a very unsafe place to visit due to drug gangs using the premises for their deeds, if anyone is a genuine guest then they will not get much sleep at night due to people shouting and fighting among themselves. One person who has stayed here has mentioned attack dogs are on the premises, which have the capability of attacking children, so if planning on taking very young children to this dangerous place, keep an eye on them closely. The parking lot is classed to be free to customers but most of the parking lot has been transformed into a car sales lot, the rooms smell of mold according to another person that stayed at New Sea Breeze Motel and suggested to any possible future guests to take their own cleaning products. Customer service is not the staff specialty too, the motel is classed to be open 24-7, probably to the drug dealers in the area. If you are a genuine guest late at night, the staff will make sure you're unwelcome and charge more for their services. Within California now for our next three stories. First being. Green Valley Motel or Lake California is situated alongside some nice picturesque views of the Californian landscape, a shame the motel was not able to keep the place beautiful. Many believe that this motel closed its doors in 2013, however, while doing my research I found a review from 2017 complaining about the bad smelling rooms, bedding was dirty and the towels were disgusting too. They were not the only problems with this motel. It had a large infestation of cockroaches which were poisoned to death, electrical problems and large amounts of mold within the rooms, plumbing and rodent problems, also tiles loose on the roof. What could be good for this motel is abolishment and a developer building another motel that represents the beauty of the location. Second. The Topanga Ranch in Malibu, began its life in 1929 as a work camp for men that constructed the Pacific Highway, then it opened to the public in 1940, then became a shelter for one man since 1953. This building was torn down by the state as they wanted to clean up the area. Topanga Ranch became dilapidated over the years as it was not maintained. So the area can be cleaned and preserved for the area's natural beauty and wildlife. Third. The Amboy Ghost Town Motel. The town of Amboy used to play host to travelers of the old highway of Route 66 
The town was first settled in 1858 and established in 1883 by Louis Kingman. One of the original residents became an owner of the full town. Within the first part of the 21st century the town was sold on eBay to where Alberto Cura became the new owner. Since the new ownership, neon lights have been fully replaced, a cafe and gas station has been fully refurbished same with the motel, now known as Roy's has been reopened to the public. The airport, church, graveyard, and school also a volcanic crater can be explored by members of the public if visitors are able to tolerate the heat of the desert. Guests must also be prepared before visiting this location by taking a full tank of fuel and water just in case Roy's is not open. Only sounds that can be heard in the area is a train that bypasses on the track that was created in 1917, before then the track went through the town known as Atlantic and Pacific Railroad, also guests can hear light manned aircraft using the airstrip. Otherwise the town is harmoniously quiet, the motel encourages people to recycle, so the owner has placed signs within the cabins reminding guests to do so. There are no functioning toilets on this site, if anyone does wish to urinate there are funnels that help you pee in empty water bottles, these full water bottles are on display in the cabins. I guess travelers must not forget a shovel for the number twos. Now to the town that has the creepiest name but for its history blends in well. Tombstone, the previous home for Big Nose Kate, Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday. Is also home to Larian Motel, which is centered in the middle of Tombstone and not far away from the old country attractions was built in 1952. Larian still provides the old country hospitality to the guests. It's not only the location that places this motel in these short stories but a ghost that resides at Larian Motel. If anyone chooses to visit and intrigued by paranormal accounts then room 119 is for you, in this room a man committed suicide, although there have been apparitions seen in other areas of the motel, furniture and other objects moving with no explanation and otherworldly voices been heard. The final story is about... Manor House Motel in Aurora, Colorado was fitted with ceiling vents, within the 60s, without guests' knowledge these ceiling vents were fake, instead they were used as spy holes for the owner Gerald Foos, just so he was able to get turned on by the guests having sex. Only reason why Gerald Foos was found out after decades of being a perverted criminal. An author stayed in his motel and wrote a book about similar happenings that Gerald Foos was doing in reality, which was unbeknownst to the author at the time. According to Gerald Foos his wife supported his actions, probably pornographic videos were not enough for his idea of a jerk-off, but he wanted the real-life action too. Also in 2013 a reporter found interesting information. Back in 1977 Gerald Foos admitted he witnessed a murder within a room, he never reported this to the authorities probably because he did not want to give his perving antics away. The reporter also stated that Gerald Foos is a reputable liar, if anyone was to ask him the same question three times in a week, each time he would give a different answer. Which motel would you choose to spend the night? You know what to do. Thank you for your support.